I, 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 you're correct, and it needs to have an introduction, <laughs> which I have not thought of one at all. Anyway, need to say, this is you and I doing our test pilot of uh, Steve Jackson's and Ian Livingston's The Warlock of Firetop Mountain! I might not do that. So, uh, this book here. Indeed. It's quite fortunate that I have one too, otherwise we'll be a bit buggered for doing what we're doing. Indeed. Um, in case this actually goes out to anyone other than the two of us, the reason for doing this particular book, we were at Games Expo at the start of the month, attended a talk by Mr. Jackson and Mr. Livingston on the Family Games Workshop, which in and of itself was uh, an interesting hour in a rather hot, stuffy room. Uh, but the out, uh, outcome from that was we were doing a signing at the end. Uh, we both wandered around the con for a bit and found someone selling the old 25th anniversary Warlock quite cheaply for David, um, and went and got his copy signed. While we were there, um, I managed to get one of the last two copies. I believe it was it from Ian's stash. They were saying David. I think it might have been. I mean, this was from the, the the book that they had on the desk in front of them. I mean, you have forked out an extra whole two pounds for your copy, so uh, enjoy the. I'm not going to quibble. Um, yeah, I mean, these are the 25th anniversary editions. There's a bunch of bunch of extra information in the back. It's using the original artwork again, and to be fair, it's a pretty nicely put together book. Um, I imagine they're going to be doing a general print run again if they're not already. So. If nothing else, um, we thought this evening we would we would try a two-person playthrough of, of the war. Uh, David will be the person currently known as the hero. I, I was I was going to go with like humble protagonist or person who dies from kicking door, as tends to be mostly my experience of playing any roguelike game ever. Uh, and I guess you will be playing God, otherwise known as the GM or narrator. Or possibly, you know, the warlock, depending on your point of view. And possibly how far we get through in this little test cycle. I, I think it's quite unlikely we're not going to get to the end. It's pretty unlikely, but we might see how far we can get before David dies. Uh, well, Indeed. David's character, uh, anyway. I'm now slightly more worried than I was when we started doing this. So the way this is going to work is that... Uh, I, I hate your evil laugh. Uh, the way this is going to work is that I've rolled my character now. We did that the, before we went live. I was actually quite fortunate in the sense that there are three major stats for my character. The first skill, which effectively is your fighting strength for monsters and monster encounters. Um, I actually managed to get the highest that I could get on that roll, and I totally wasn't cheating. Um, so that comes out as an initial starter score of 12. Uh, for stamina, I scored a completely average uh, 7, which brings me up to 19, so nothing particularly special for that. And then lastly, luck, uh, I rolled a... <laughs> One, so the complete. In fact, my rolls are exactly average. So I had the highest score, the lowest score, and the middle score. So I'm in fact a statistical likelihood. Uh, I've also chosen to go for a uh, potion of strength. I think it is, which I'm particularly going to refer to as being a potion of stamina for the rest of this, because that's the skill that it affects. So essentially, I've got a get out of jail. Well, a get out of the grave free <laughs> potion. So if I'm about to cough one, uh, I can chug back on my lovely elixir of life and uh, live to fight another day. So I, th I think we're gonna kind of crack on into it. Really, I mean, it's fortunate for us is the fact that it's quite lately I'm going to die. So there can be many a playthrough. So <laughs> I think we start at uh, the beginning. I think we'll avoid the whole rumor section because, as has been pointed out, well, it sets the scene somewhat nicely. It's a bit of a slog. It's um, a lot of text for the purposes of the pilot. Needless to say, there is a big mountain with an evil warlock at the top of it. I, as a handsome and dashing but somewhat unlucky adventurer, I'm going to sally forth into the dark and evil mountainous caverns in search of fat loots and maybe a Netflix uh, subscription. Whatever it is that adventurers kind of go for these days. Indeed. So, we'll start on well, surprisingly enough, one. Uh, are you sitting comfortably? No, I'm not. I'm on a wooden stool. Eh, you've had plenty of time to get a cut. <laughs> At last, your two-day hike is over. You unsheath your sword, lay it on the ground, 
and sigh with relief as you lower yourself down onto the mossy rocks to sit for a moment's rest. You stretch, rub your eyes, and finally look up at Firetop Mountain. This isn't also the uh, pilot script for Brokeback Mountain, is it? Because there's quite a lot of similarities at this point. <laughs> I don't remember swords in that film. We might have made it better. Anyway. I think that was a metaphor. That looks menacing. The steep face in front of you looks to have been savaged by the claws of some gargantuan beast. Sharp, rocky crags jut out at unnatural angles. At the top of the mountain, you can see the eerie red colouring probably some strange vegetation, which has given the mountain its name. Perhaps no one will ever know exactly what grows up there, as climbing the peak must surely be impossible. Your quest lies ahead of you. Across the clearing is a dark cave entrance. You pick up your sword, get to your feet, and consider what dangers may lie ahead of you. But with determination, you thrust the sword home into its scabbard and approach the cave. You peer into the gloom to see dark, slimy walls with pools of water on the stone floor in front of you. The air is cold and dank. You light your lantern and step warily into the blackness. Cobwebs brush your face and you hear the scurrying of tiny feet. Rats, most likely. You set off into the cave. After a few yards, you arrive at a junction. Mr. Jones, will you turn west or east? Well, I'm going to go with the, the completely sound logic that since I live in East London, I should turn east. Okay. I'm not quite sure. There, there is a methodology, isn't there? So if you're lost in the maze, I think you're always supposed to turn... Is it always turn left? I think is what they say if you're in a maze. But I'm going to go east. I will go east. I have... Uh, I will turn the page. I have made my commitment. Okay. The passageway soon comes to an end. It's a locked wooden door. You listen at the door, but hear nothing. Will you try to charge the door down? Do you feel like shoulder tackling the door, David? So basically, my first action in this entire game is to come up against a locked door and run into it. Am I literally hitting my head against the door? You can barge it down, or you can turn around and go back to the junction. Which do you prefer to do? I, I don't suppose there's like a nice little kind of uh, doorbell or a nice door knocker. Maybe Not like one. Dungeon, no. no. Is is there one door that always tells the truth and one door that always tells lies? This one door is both of those doors. Which may or may not be somewhat paradoxical, but answer the question. I don't know, that might be the most profound thing you have ever said, <laughs> yet also the most stupid. Um, I, I will be a headstrong adventurer and I will charge uh, at the door, because apparently okay. that's what adventurers do with swords, we, we run at doors. Okay, well I did point out you'd be using your shoulder on this one at least. You charge the door with your shoulder, I bet. Roll two dice, if the number rolled is less than or equal to your skill score, you succeed. Though, to be fair, and your skill is 12, so that seems somewhat pointless. So we will just work on the assumption you so succeed. Ah, oh, I wanted to tokenistically roll dice, despite... I want to see how much I kick that door down. Wow, uh, that, that's actually quite a good roll. I've got 8, so I think, to be honest with you, I, I scoring, what, 20 against a, a roll needed of what? You needed to roll equal to or under your skill. You weren't adding your skill onto the roll. Oh, I see. Uh, in that case, I'm fine. I'm totally underneath my skill. Okay. The door bursts open, and you fall headlong into a room. But your heart jumps as you realise you are not landing on the floor, but plunging down a pit of some kind. Luckily, the pit is not particularly deep, and you land in a heap less than two metres down. Uh, lose one stamina point for your bruises, climb out of the pit into the room, and leave through the door, heading westwards. So basically, I am in fact Andy from Parks and Recreation, and this is Season 1 of Parks and Recreation. I feel I should do some sort of musical medley about how I fell in the pit. I was actually going to think you were more like Andy Roberts, but there you go. 
That's beautiful. Let, let's start the insider references now, shall we? Okay, so basically, I've charged down a door, and I've fallen down a hole, and I've hurt myself. Now I'm... You're mildly good. You're mildly okay. good. Well, if anything, you've learned something for when you do the run through of this, which is don't go east. East is rubbish. Go <laughs> west. Life is peaceful there. You arrive oh. back at the junction in the passage. You look left to see the cave entrance in the dim distance, but walk straight on. There's a right-hand turn to the north in the passage. Cautiously, you approach the sentry post on the corner, and, as you look in, you can see a strange goblin-like creature in leather armour asleep at his post. You try to tiptoe past him. Test your luck. So, for Excellent. those who are familiar with the rule system on this, test your luck, roll 2d6, Get equal to or less than your luck value. Yeah. Your luck is currently seven. Let's hope it doesn't run out. Drum roll, please. <laughs> you said that far too viciously. <laughs> okay, so my my starting luck score is in fact lower than it could be, so I need seven or lower from two dice. That is admittedly average. Um, and of course, I'm, your luck will go down by one. Oh, brilliant! I'm going to get less lucky. Uh, oh crap. I have rolled eight, <laughs> so I am rather too noisy, I think. You were unlucky, so you step with a crunch on some loose ground as his eyes flick open. I hope so, means we get to test the combat system. It does! It, that, that's the positive that I'm going to take from this. Not at all, also, that the art assets for this scene have also been drawn in advance, so it's quite fortunate that I fail. <laughs> Eight. It's worth noting, by the way, that uh, we have to flick through the books on the grounds that uh, it's not in chronological order, so you constantly have to like flick forward and flick backwards in the numbering system. So, two, four, eight. You are dealing with an orc, which I think I've just mentioned. Um, the orc, for the purposes of this fight, has skill six and stamina five. So, you do quite outmatch him on a skill front, so I quite a benefit there. Okay, so, the creature that's just awakened is an orc. He scrambles to his feet and tends to grasp at a rope, which is probably the alarm bell. You must attack him quickly. Cue the fight scene. Okay, how about this? Music. Here. <laughs> you'll, add it, you'll edit that in in post. Okay. Oh, I'll so. do so much in post, it'll be amazing. Indeed. So, we both roll 2d6 and add our relative skill, as opposed to the skill of our relatives. Okay, I'm twice as skillful as he, so hopefully I should cock this up. I have scored the completely average 7. Interestingly, that's what I rolled as well. Now, as we both add our skill, this means we win the, the this round of the fight by 6. Woohoo! You have a significant advantage. Damn straight, sucker. So, You've wounded the creature with your sword, inflicting two points of stamina damage. So that takes him down to three, and I remain unharmed. You can, if you wish, test your luck to try and inflict further injury. Or you can just rely on the fact that you're probably going to hit him every single that time, and beat him over the head repeatedly with a sword. Also, your luck, not so hot so far. <laughs> My luck is just going to get worse as we go on. I am going to go with the statistically most sensible option, which is to continue to beat him over the head with a sharpened metal stick, on the grounds that, in theory, I completely outrank him. I'd like to think that in this scene, I've kind of come through the door, his eyes have flickered open, I've like whipped out my... Well, 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 I, I'd like to think that I was recovering from the, the crunching gravel underneath. His eyes flick open and I'm like Wah! with my sword and instantly slash him across the legs. Don't ruin my fantasy. Anyway, round two. Fight. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay. So I rolled my dice. I, I I am in fact the king of statistics today, as I've rolled another seven. I am not the king of statistics. I rolled a oh. twelve. Ooh. I rolled a twelve, and my creature's skill is a mere six, taking me to a total of eighteen. 
your seven added to your skill of twelve means that you do in fact yet again strike the orc with your blade, inflicting a further two points of damage. He is not looking so hot. Again, I offer you the opportunity to test your luck or strike once more. Do you ever get the feeling that there's a, a casino out there that's missing you as being like a croupier? <laughs> Go on, draw another card. You're on 20. It's bound to be an ace. You'll totally get 21. Um, I will continue with the uh, strategy of beating him with a sword, because I only need to hit him once. Okay. Round three. This I will say you won the first two now, so, you know. Ooh, ooh, I am now slightly above statistically average. I rolled an eight. I merely rolled a 7, um, so you beat him by some distance, and my orc dies. This thing's somewhat unfortunate. There is blood, possibly guts, and the sound of death in the air. I'd like to think that uh, as that happens, he kind of like falls to his knees, kind of raises his hands up towards the sky, and he's like, WHY? Ben I was two come. days from retirement! This is not a buddy cop film, and if he was, he would be an antagonist, not a protagonist. So a buddy cop film from the point of view of the villain could be interesting. But I digress. That's for left, another pilot. <laughs> to your left, on the west face of the passage, there is a rough cut wooden door. You listen at the door, and can hear a rasping sound which may be some sort of creature snoring. Do you wish to open the door, or would you rather press on northwards? I will point out that while David is thinking about this, one of the things I do recommend doing while you're playing through this is drawing a map. I have no idea if he is actually doing that. And also, <laughs> David, like draw your face in a box lid, and then you can't lose it off the table. Uh, okay, so I've done my little orc. I've come into another room, I've got possible Zs behind another door, and I've got a corridor carrying it on. Um, Randomly, yeah. I'd like to say how much modern video gaming has uh, influenced my behaviour at this point. I'm assuming that I don't get any like loot drops off of the orc. I'm feeling that I should be like searching his body for stuff. There's got to be. Is there no, gonna no, be... That loots off the random guard orc. Is there not going to be like a vendor halfway through that asks me to collect like five orc livers, which only have like a five percent drop rate at some point? You have played far too much. Wow. I really haven't. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so, okay. I I am going to. Uh, well, I've done pretty well in combat so far, so I'm going to continue this run of average dice rolling. Uh, and do I get the option of really, really gingerly opening the the snoozing potential monster door? Yeah, it just says you open the door or do not. There is no try. In that case, I wish to open the door. Do 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 do. Okay. The door opens to reveal a small, smelly room. In the centre of the room is a rickety wooden table on which stands a lit candle. Underneath the table is a small wooden box. Asleep on a straw mattress in the far corner of the room is a short, stocky creature with an ugly, warty face. The same sort of creature that you found asleep at the sentry post. So he must be the guard. <laughs> he must be the guard for the night watch. He may either return to the corridor and press on northwards, or creep into the room and try to take the box without waking the creature. Do you wish to try to steal the box? Uh, all, all I'm hearing at this point is uh, a little kind of like. Uh, voice in my head, which is saying, there is loot, there is loot, you should take I'm going to take that and say, you're going to try and steal the box, shall I? I I, I don't think I'm going to steal the box, Is I, I deal in this situation, what I'd like to do is walk up to the sleeping orc and stick my sword through his head, but apparently that's not an option, so we're going to go for stealing. Okay, David Jones, oh God. Bet your luck. Um, just out of interest, considering I've, have I rolled a luck score once already? So I have. Does that make my initial 7 disappear? And your initial six? 7 is still your initial 7, but your current score is now 6. Yes, okay, so that 
Yeah. Okay. So, uh, oh, come on, statistics. Come on, statistics. As one of these dice is a six and the other dice is a five, I think it's very unlikely that I'm going to roll less than six. No matter how you do the maths, I think you might be right. I think I am. I think I've woken up whatever it is that's going to try and attack me now, isn't it? The sleeping creature awakens, startled. He jumps up and rushes at you unarmed. With your sword, you fail to defeat him, but his sharp teeth look rather vicious. You may escape through the door, or stand and fight the orc that is attacking you. If you defeat the creature, you may take the box. Well, Nick, I've had a lovely time. We've had some great moments on the show. I'm going to still try and take the box. I'm going to play. Let's play. Fight that <laughs> orc. On the plus side, his skill is six, so this should be fairly okay. Ah! You remember when I said, try using a box lid? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're totally on the floor. Do you want the roll that it actually was when it was on the floor? Because it comes on up to... Uh... Count. Ah, whatever. Well, it's one higher, so I have scored nine. That's good, I only rolled a three, so you tag him. Poof. Now, so what we've learnt is that sharp teeth in the face versus giant man with big lump of sharpened metal. Sharpened metal win! Strange that. I know. Do you so, wish to test your luck and inflict more damage? No, I wish to keep on beating the crap out of him. Combat round two. Fight. I really can with my dice rolling now. <laughs> oh. I scored five, which adds to twelve, makes seventeen. Well, for the second combat round in succession. Define statistics. I rolled a three. Ah. Um, so, unsurprisingly, the orc falls between beneath between your blade. No, beneath your blade. Da 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 da. Nicely put. Jump to my next page. You leave the room. I'd I'd like to think that you know when my hero has you know splattered down the orc, he's like sweet dreams and. and if you could do an Austrian accent, it might be doable. I, I, was, I was trying for generic. I didn't even go with an Arnie style impression then. Although it is a point to consider. You leave the room and open the box in the passage. Inside you find a single piece of gold and a small mouse, which must have been the creature's pet. You keep the coin and release the mouse, which scurries off down the passageway. Gain two luck points. Woohoo! Actually, for you, probably more treasure than the gold. It means I'm back up to the beginning score of seven. Indeed. Plus the game, one the... gold. Hooray. One thing I will recap, for those who may not have read the combat system in this, or the rules, is that you can never go above your initial value. So this fortunately has just restored you to what you started at. Yes, so I started with not a lot, I went down to not so much, and now I'm back to not a lot. I'm so lucky. Well, if you failed every luck roll so far, that would be complete that assertion. Further up the passage, along the west wall, you see another door. You listen at it, but hear nothing. If you want to try opening the door, you can. Alternatively, you can continue northwards along the passageway. I'm slightly gutted that I don't get to keep the mouse. I could have had like an animal companion. I could go have sent it. Like... Go for the eyes! Exactly! It's like, Mousekowitz, attack! You're stalling, um, I, I am stalling. Do I go further down the corridor or do I go into the next room? Well, so far, going into rooms has worked out pretty well for me, so, uh. Let's let's go into the room. I have a horrible suspicion that it will be something very nasty. The 
door opens to reveal a small room with a stone floor and dirty walls. There's a stale smell in the air. In the centre of the, of the room is a makeshift wooden table on which is standing a lit candle. Under the table is a small box. In the far corner of the room is a straw mattress. Unoccupied. You may either open the box or leave the room. Why, why do I get the feeling that I should be poking this box with like a, a stick from quite a safe angle <laughs> at this point? This is why I needed the mouse! I could have thrown the mouse at the box! Um, I'll, I'll open the box? The box is light, but something rattles within. What, so it's like Christmas? Lid? I've picked it up and I'm shaking it to see what it is. You open the lid, and a small snake darts out to bite at your wrist. Oh, good grief. You must fight the snake. Sally won't I... listen to me speaking words. Can I not just, you know, stand on the snake? <laughs> Is it a box attacking your wrist? That may be a little tricky. Ah, fair enough. Okay, so it has a skill of five and a stamina of two, so can I not just sneeze on it forcefully and kill it? Well, there's always a chance. Two words. <laughs> Box lid. Yes, I'm enjoying the fact that I rolled a ten on of this. <laughs> Well, I managed a mighty six, taking me to a total of eleven, so you do defeat the snake. Woohoo! In your face, serpent! The box has fallen to the ground during your fight with the snake, and out of it has fallen a bronze coloured key with the number 99 carved into it. You may take this key with you, noting your equipment, and leave the room. And this is where the whole point about initial values comes into play. Add one luck point. Oh wait, you can't. <sighs> Excellent. So, I have progressed down the road. I have got myself a key. I have been bitten by a snake. I have dispatched two orcs. And I fell in a pit and bruised my shoulder. It's going pretty well. I'll, 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 I'll say this has been a very successful adventure. 